Hello and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the newspapers and the headlines and dissect it as much as we can and try to make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is a, a reputation manager to Boston Akeju. Good to have you again here. Good morning. Thanks Good for having me. Good morning. All right. So we have a couple of papers here. We have The Nation and the rest. So we'll begin with The Nation. It will be displayed on your screen uh, now. So it says, government, Fashola government to complete road projects. We are focused. Good to know. And last on page eight, already displayed there on your screen of the nation newspaper. Uniben, ABU, join rival ASU group, uh, Konwa in seven of cities. And that's on page 40 of the nation newspaper. AMI puts 130 soldiers on court, uh, court martial. That's on page 40 also. Trial ongoing in Borno. And then customs generates 1.002 trillion naira in nine months. And that's on the front page there, as you can see. Opera launches Opera News Hub, and that's on page, it's on the front page, yeah, but uh, no, the story rather is on page three of the nation newspaper. And the big story for the nation is Mark Day Appeal Court sets aside tribunal's uh, verdict. Others retention of pre tribunal uh, status quo. That's on the front page there. And uh, Buhari, uh, Mosop, Asu, others, Mon David West, yeah, the late Professor David West passed on, ex minister dies at uh, 83. God rest him there. It's continued. The story is on, it's on the front page there, but this continued on page seven of the nation newspaper. And then, develop, devolve power, give more cash to states, says Shomole. That story is on page seven. Prosecute those behind ghost workers. And then elders should stay off this course. On page seven, two, Abiodun's victory reaffirms his divine mandate, says Ogun APC. And that's on page 42. So, Tobosun, which one is catching your attention this morning? Um, I, uh, quite a number. First okay. is. Um, Let's start from the, somewhere. The issue with Fashola. Mm -hmm. um, it's rather, you know, social media is very funny. And uh, it's rather unfortunate how. You know, his statements he made, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> during the statement he had predicted he would be quoted out of context mm -hmm. and he was quoted out of, out mm -hmm. of context. He saw it um, coming. He knew it would happen. Yes, and it happened very, very badly, so much that he's not, you know, trying to clean up. But um, I, 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 you have to also um, the, the comment and this, at the same time question why some of those projects. You know, I've taken so long. Mm -hmm. um, particularly is Lagos Ibadan Express because it's one that I use quite often. And the question I keep asking myself is why that project continues to take to stop. yeah so so long. As 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 far back as I know, they've continuously fixed that road, mm -hmm. and a portion of it is very bad. And sometime last week, I heard that one of the reasons why they've been slow is because the trailer park, so to speak, you know, they've refused to move and. That, and I'm like, uh, we're How not a lawless. Yeah, we're not a lawless country. So what, what's government doing about it? Can't you move them to another place where you can quickly fix that road? Because when you travel through the section of that road that is good, you have a taste of what it feels like to travel on a good road. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, and then when you get to the bad part, is very very horrible. Uh, so I hope that two extremes. <laughs> yeah, it's very very like ma massive extreme. And then the worst part of it is. At some particular point, because they are fixing certain parts of the road, the traffic is insane. Mm. You know, sometimes you travel all the way from Ibadan, spend like one hour, and then you get to Lagos and spend like another one and a half hours in traffic just within somewhere that to you get should out like, of that yeah, part. just like 10, 15 minutes trip. So, um, what you have to commend federal government for focusing on fixing all of this road. I think that another thing that has to be looked into is how can we do this very efficiently and the shortest possible time. Mm -hmm. And the number two is that we more than ever need an alternative mass transport system. I All of us cannot agree. continue to road. put our cars on the road. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I Maybe think, it's something to consider. Maybe yeah. it's something you should look at. Yeah. Um, I think the other story would be the issue of the appeal court um, mm -hmm. yesterday uh, that, you know, almost threw social media into a frenzy mm -hmm. uh, because the judgment was not properly interpreted. Uh, well, uh, you know, interpreted. Uh, I think that, um, you know, it's very important for the media to continue to help put things in the right context. And I'm happy that, you know, this morning, at least so far, I've not seen any sensational headline uh -huh. about it. Because what, from my own, you know, understanding of what I've read, what the judge was trying to say is that the uh, 
election tribunal did not do justice to the evidence mm -hmm. that APC had put before it. However, it's, it's not... It's past the day, the yes, um, grace days. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to go back to that, you know, the, 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 the status, we'll maintain the status quo. Mm. Um, that doesn't, you know, evidently say that um, if the tri election tribunal should do justice to the um, evidence before it, mm -hmm. that they were going to upturn, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the judgment. But, you know, lawyers and judges have a way of you know, analyzing the evidences before them, you know, in the most um, broken down way as possible. So you have 10 count charges before you, you might not get sentenced for those 10 count charges, mm -hmm. but you could get sentenced for five out of those 10. And I think that that's what has happened there. But I'm happy that, you know, the, the, the news was, well, was properly, uh, people were corrected quickly before, mm -hmm. you know, and properly presented yes, to the public. Yes, because, I mean, the media sets the agenda, so oh, we yes. have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good to hear that. Any other thing? Devolve power, give more cash to states, says Oshamale. What I, are your thoughts? Devolve power, yes. Give more cash to states. Would I'm this not, solve the problem? I'm not entirely sure about mm -hmm. that. I think what's more important is, number one, for the states to become more economically viable on their own, um, to look in word and see how they can make the best use of it. If we, continue, if, we, if we look at the context of that statement that you should give more cash to them, mm. that means we're still bringing all the cash together and their region should put it in. While we should look inward and say, and generate oh, ours. there State is for your state. Agri there's Ocean State, there's Agri, there's Ikiti State, tourism, there's Ondo State, a bit of Agri and, you know, oil. How can we make the best use of the natural resources that we have here mm -hmm. to do the best? And then you go, you know, to um, to the highly commercial side of um, um, Southeast, you know, and say that how can we upgrade, you know, commerce in this area? Yeah. Do we have industries? How can we make this place a commercial hub and all of that? I think those are the things we need to look at. As against, you know, or continuously look into the center to give mm -hmm. us cash. You I almost think, look like the handout situation. Exactly. And I, I strongly think that if there's so much power in the state, it would be easier to devolve power from the center yeah. because, you know, it's just the power flow. If the states are so powerful, you know, and it's almost like we can stand on our own and then, you know, the power will just flow in the direction where there will be, there will be more consultation from the state uh -huh. than uh, from, from the federal. And if, if the states are delivering very well, I don't think that it would be very difficult to get to that stage. So yeah. I don't completely agree with that position. <laughs> Great. Now, Uniben and ABU join rival ASU, ASU Group. Do you have any thoughts uh, on that? The ASU issue, yeah. I, I really don't get what the fuss is about in making, you know, digitize it, how salaries are mm -hmm. paid. So like, I, I, I wait to really understand what the problem is there. Mm -hmm. If we all ask for transparency, wouldn't it be just as right to do that? Really? I, I, like I said, I still don't really get what the force is about. <laughs> we'll find out from them. <laughs> and then uh, Ami puts uh, 130 soldiers. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Is that the word to say? Well, I'm glad that we are seeing this part, you know, that um, there's a certain level of putting people, asking people to, you know, put in, uh, bringing justice, you know, asking people to be responsible for their actions. Mm -hmm. You know, if this can happen, if this can trickle down to other sectors or other uh, sections of, of the country, I think we are headed in the right path because 130 is a, is a big number. Yeah, uh, but sometimes also, it's also a red flag, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Because when, when you look at people, it, it takes a lot to say that I want to be, I want to serve in the military. Generation. It's it, there, there's a lot of passion that comes from that. So when you get in the middle of it and then you quote and unquote start to misbehave, then we should question: Is there is there a motive? problem? You know, uh, at a particular point in time, they were, you know, it was in the news that they were not being treated well. And you know, you, so they are—they are also humans, even though they've, you know, put their life on the line to defend the sovereignty of the country. So I think rather than you know go all the way out and say that you have put 130 30. soldiers on court martial, can we look at the circumstances that have surrounded yeah, how they've behaved, you know, and all of that? So I—I um, I actually think that some of these NGOs that are in that space should actually really look into this issue and let's be sure that these people are not just being you know, treated badly mm -hmm. um, um, with no just cause. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for your thoughts. Then we'll move to the next paper, which will be Vanguard newspaper. We'll come to the others, but we'll take Vanguard now. And it says, 
Uh, we can take bolder and more original initiative to reverse the deepening poverty in our country, according to Milafia there on page 31 of the Vanguard newspaper. An appeal court upholds Abiodun uh, Malkinde's victory on page 11. Recent decision to regulate social media space, NGA tells federal government on page 8. Buhari Lau and others mourn as Tam David West dies at 83. And that's on page 7. On page 8, border closure, farmers pledged to produce more food and heal uh, federal government's action. Okay? Mm, the big story is gloom as power supply lags behind target by 7,454 megawatts. Threatens the federal government's economic and recovery growth plan and man LCCI lament as part calls for government's intervention. All of this you find on page 5 uh, of the Vanguard newspaper. Serap seeks Archbishop of a Canterbury's intervention in Shawaray and Bakaris release. That's on page 10. And federal government declares war on importers of fake medicines. That's on page 13. You can see that it displayed on your screen. And um, something on Opera launches new hub, uh, news hub. And that's, uh, you see the story on page 12. And on page 8, again, remittances, reps want the 14 heads of agencies sacked. And that's on page 8. All right, so we have a couple of stories here. Which one do we want to start? And then, for, sorry, I just seem to skip this. Federal governments to unveil incentives for businesses migrating online. Okay, and that's on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. Um, right, I think awesome. we can start with the um, screen right there um, mm. about the power industry. I think it was. Shall we get to a point where we'll just be okay and we don't talk about it? I think it's, we're, we're very far from that. I think it was on Friday night, or thereabout, um, the National Grid collapsed yes. again. And, um, you know, I've, um, in the course of my work, I've had to um, work with some of the players in the power sector, which also has given me a bit of understanding about mm -hmm. it. And the opi my opinion is that you have to decentralize. Uh, the, you know, the transmission. You completely think so? You, I think we have to decentralize it. Um, I think that it, it's too many moving parts. And if we can decentralize it, then we, the risk will be reduced. It doesn't mean that the government will completely lose control of it, but I think that that's what will help us to, you know, speed up this. And I've, we've seen, you know, the, how some of the problems have been solved in, in bits. So when you look at the, the approach to premium power that some estates now enjoy today, what, and the contractors will pay more, but just give us 20 to, you know, uh, you know, 20 hours of, guarantee 20 hours of supply. So what is happening mm -hmm. is that they have preferential treatment. I think we can do the same because you have industry clusters and all of that. Sure. You know, and, and so I, I think that one of the biggest problem that they will tell you about economic growth in Nigeria is power. Sure. So I think that if something is that big that is causing a problem, you might want to break it down and then solve it in bits rather yeah. than have, because today we have capacity to generate more than the capacity we have to generate is way more than the, the capacity we have to distribute, which is one of the problem, which is one of the reasons why we have some of this collapse once in a while, uh -huh. you know, because the system is, you know, is weak and all of that. And I think that government should really, really consider, you know, decentralizing, you know, the transmission uh -huh. um, space so that they can quickly speed up some of this group because we have critical areas where you have this industry where, you know, they need more power than every other mm -hmm. person. And then you can, you know, solve their problem first then move to other places where you need it for more domestic... Uh, because it has energy. a direct uh, you know, bearing uh, to the economy. Oh, yes, if, When we have a constant power supply, it, we would it, see the difference. It does, it does, it does. Okay. And so. then um, I think we can look at um, um, the... Um, Regular social media? Or, yes. Um, you see... We've spoken about I, this. I constantly say that I think that we are, um, we're military on Gover in this country, yes. Hmm. We think that the solution to everything is force. No. Which is unfortunate. It's rather unfortunate. It. I, I, you see, you cannot really regulate social media. Because what is going to Completely. just... You can't really regulate it. I, I, I was watching a movie slash documentary over the weekend um, about um, um, Cambridge Analytica and the US election. Mm -hmm. And um, they claim to have 5,000 data points on each of the 30 million voters that they have. If you don't have 5,000, you don't know 5,000 things about yourself. Sure. So by technology, someone knows 5,000 things about you. And then our life has all has become 
you know, very digitized. If I log into a browser that has your email today and you have that same email on your phone, I'll tell you almost everywhere you've been in the last six months. Mm -hmm. So when governments say that they want to regulate something that has now become a part of our being, that has been woven into the fabric of our living, it is almost impossible. What I think should be done, again, it is what I call, or the strategy that is behavioral change campaign. Mm -hmm. Ask people to change the way they use social, social media. media. Ask people not to, you know, amplify something that they have not confirmed. Show them how it damages themselves. True. Everybody will take precautions. So when you know that what you're about to retreat can, inf can inflame violence that can make you lose a loved one, you think twice. Mm -hmm. Make it, ingrain it in the living and behavior of people. Let's like understand said, how it affects us. It, yes, it's not by threatening and saying that, oh, you're going to regulate it. Yes, put things in place and say that. You know, make um, some of our laws more stringent and say that if you have, if you make on um, 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 uh, confirmed um, or you publish That's falsehood right. or they, we have the libel laws and everything in place, but don't say you want to regulate social uh -huh. media. Do you understand? This is, this is a platform that has made, that has improved how you know, um, that has impacted our socioeconomic development. I mean, there's a good side, I agree. There's a good so side you, of social Yeah, exactly. Media. So you can't say, but what you can say is that you can start to teach people how to correctly use social media. The U.S. is not trying to close down Facebook. Mm -hmm. No. They're just trying to say that you have, you've, you have this platform and you cannot make this platform jeopardize X, Y, Z. So you have to put things in place. So, for example, Twitter has said, oh, no, we're not going to take political adverts anymore. anymore. Do you think that politicians will, will still put advert there? Of course they will put advert mm. there, but they will find a better way to put it there. Some of the people who talked extensively about what happened in Cambridge Analytica said the reason they are talking about this is that in retrospect, they think they've done something bad. They just wanted to create business. One of them, you know, one of the directors actually worked on the Obama campaign. And she's saying, yeah, you know, so you'll have imagined that someone that, she said she has worked in elections from when she was 14. Wow. She's it's a space she has always been interested in. Maybe she's lying, maybe it's a decoy. But the story there is that Everyone is saying that the reason I'm speaking out today is because this is a tool that has been used mm -hmm. in the wrong way. You give So one of the things they said, you give access. I give access to Cambridge Analytica because I took a survey or something. And then what happens is, you know, um, you have access to the data of all my friends on mm -hmm. Facebook. That is what is wrong. And, you know, the manipulation and the propaganda yeah. is what's wrong. So if government is... Privacy issues. Exactly. So if government is saying, oh, they want to try and regulate something... I think that it should be more about behavior action campaign, teaching us how to guide ourselves against data abuse and all of that, and saying that don't share X, Y, Z on mm -hmm. social media, don't do this, this, how to, I think that that's what this we This is this effect. You know, you exactly. Work. So I, I, I think that, you know, we're just trying to use force when we should be using, you know, all the methods. We should understand it, first of all. Exactly. All yeah. right, thank you so very much. So we'll go to, we'll move to this day newspaper now, and it says, uh, despite allowing a Labo's appeal, um, Appeal court retains Mark Inde as Oyo's governor. Abiodun defeats Akin Lade in Ogun. It's on the front page there, uh, already displayed, thank you. And But it's continued on page eight. Now, risk perception about Africa exaggerated, says AFDB president additional on page six. Uh, 60 hearty cheers, uh, what's that about? Um, well, it's a celebration, 60th anniversary of a company yesterday in Lagos, more car form actually. And then Nigeria loses uh, 162,000 children to pneumonia. That's sad to hear. Uh, that's really, really sad. It's on the front page, but it's continued on page eight. And away from that story, unending insurgency raises need for military to double troops on the front page, continued also on page eight. What do you say? I think the, um, the story that has caught my attention the most here is um, um, the statement credited to the AFDB uh, president. Mm -hmm. you, know. Um, mm. you know, I um, happen to um, run um, a firm Reputation management firm, mm -hmm. and we say we're telling, we know you're a reputation manager. We say we're telling <laughs> the new African story, mm -hmm. and why we say that is that each and every of our conversation in the media is shaping the perception about Africa. And I so agree. when I see um, additional, um, Dr. Additional, you know, presenting Africa almost like nobody has ever presented, is very interesting. And this is him saying for a fact that you know the risk perception about Africa 
it's not true, it's exaggerated, uh -huh. you know. And I think that we need more people to continue to do this for us so that we Change can... Change the narrative. Exactly. Give the exact narrative. Or even something that makes Africa more attractive. Because in, in the last about two years, we've seen Africa has come to center stage for several reasons. Um, I think the peak of it will, have, will be, from my perspective, the Black Panther. It kind yeah. of showed there's so much attraction for Africa now. And more than ever before, it's very important for us now to start to tell the fantastic yeah, story. story about Africa. And so have I, a claim and, and ownership. Yes, and you have, to tell, you have to show the good side. You know, when we look at some of these countries that we constantly talk about every time, the Dubai, the Singapore, they have their bad sides. Of course. You know, the bad sides exist, but they've really amplified, you know, the bad the side. side. For example, um, I can't remember the title of the movie, but there was a movie everybody was all about earlier in the year or last year. But when I read in between the line, that movie was technically just you know, promoting Singapore. Because mm. nobody really saw Singapore. And I've seen more people have become interested in going to Singapore after seeing that movie because there's appreciation for the, the culture movie, and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. And so, so I think that more people should talk about, you know, um, the good side of Africa. Try to change the narrative about, you know, the dooms uh, narrative that we've constantly had about Africa to something that's more mm -hmm. attractive. Because there's um, so much in our nation. Really. Absolutely. There's so much it's in such this a country, blessed. in this continent it's as such a whole, blessed, um, um, that um, we need to take a look at. We've talked about Abiodun and the others. Do you want to say anything? I think um, the issue about Dublin, you know, yeah. the troops, um, I don't think that that's the only thing we have. We have a major security problem that has, you know, um, uh, a, a, what I would call a direct link to the socioeconomic uh, position of a country. Um, last week, um, uh, I, I, I lost someone, you know, to who I can't even really say, you know, I've, I've met him a couple of times. Mm. And, you know, the, the death was so painful because he was even, you know, his own security guard. And someone near that orchestrated, you know, um, the evil. Oh, we know the story. The young uh, man, yes, the economist. Yes, and you know, so he, he was very, very, very sad, and he just again reaffirmed the fact that the closest to the evil mm. seems like the middle class. And what we must do is that while this whole thing seems to have started like an insurgency, it was building up, up to you know, a point where some people grouped up and then started to wreck havoc because that's all they could think of. Yeah. So I think that if the insurgency seems to be rising beyond, you know, the security uh, force, there's a lot of intelligence that is needed. There's a lot of how we react to some of this problem, the emergency um, services available to us, how we are own brothers keepers. There's a lot of people seeing that if I work hard, if, um, if, if, I, if, I, if, you know, if I double, if I roll my sleeves, I can mm. also, you know, become something. I think that everything doesn't have to be forced. Sure. You know, it was, I mean, I mean, when I heard the news, I was devastated, you know, because I'm like, I mean, this is just another work, hard, you know, very hardworking person. It could have been anybody. So when we look at everything from the point of, oh, we just need more police on the street, what about the areas where you don't have that problem. It's a general security problem. And I think that, like I always say, when you bring it to health issues, the fact that you're having headache does not mean that the only thing that has to be treated is that headache. Mm -hmm. It could be because you're having high blood pressure, yeah. because you're having malaria. So, so, so we cannot just continue to say, oh, we need to bring this. Yes, it's important for us, you know, to suppress their power and all about beyond that. What is the underlying problem? Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, one of the things I, I learned recently is the tactics used by, they call it communication grade tactics by the US military, that at some point, what they need to do is rather than go to a town and try to bomb them up because you know you have a lot of terrorists among them, you want to change their thinking about the mm -hmm. terrorists so much that they're, and I think that a lot of that has to be done. So beyond just, you know, um, um, doubling the troops or you know using a lot of force I think that we should also look at all the other because when you kill the insurgent if you don't kill the belief that brought about the yeah insurgent, it will still also spring come. up again yes. in one way or the other uh, yeah. thank you so very much I mean I'm sorry also about your loss we heard the death of the gentleman there and I want to say thank you for coming on the show uh, this is where we will call it a wrap uh, today for off the press we will continue at the same time tomorrow 8 30 here on plus TV Africa I would ask you to always 
stay tuned uh, for this. Uh, we'll call it a day for here, uh, for today here on Of The Press. I am Amaka Okoye. Have yourselves a good day. Thank <music> you.